Hello and welcome, my friends. It's your boy Salt and Skinny, prince of all that is lean and politically unclean. Located between the Gulf of Aden and Red Sea, the country of Yemen connects the Arabian Peninsula to the African Rift Valley and Indian Ocean, making it not only one of the most important centers for commerce and trade, but also one of the oldest centers of civilization, as it happens to be right next to the birthplace of mankind. Receiving the most rainfall in Arabia, Yemen is known to the Greeks and Romans as Arabia Felis because it was the most fertile and prosperous land on an otherwise desolate sea of sand. The Jews call it Sheba, the Arabs Saba. Although being home to an array of different ethnicities, languages and tribes, the oldest and by far the most successful were the Sabaeans, a people whose legacy is among one of the greatest in human history, and also among the most neglected. A shame since it's only by uncovering the past that you can truly understand the present. around the Sarawat Mountains in a city known as Maghrib, the Sabaeans are the earliest of South Arabia's ancient peoples. It is unknown when the Sabaeans got their debut in history, but most scholars agree that these guys have been around since at least the 8th century BCE, if not hundreds of years before. Being referenced in the Bible with the appearance of the Queen of Sheba and in the Quran as the Sabaeans, Saba was one of the great civilizations of the biblical era. Although shrouded in mystery, we actually know quite a bit about the Sabaeans, as these guys seem to have gotten around and left their mark in many places. The Sabaeans had their own language and calligraphy, being the most used in ancient South Arabia and even the Horn of Africa. The Amharic, Gez, and Himyarite languages are Sabaean in origin. Like most ancient peoples of the Middle East, the Sabaeans were polytheistic, worshipping idols and gods of Mesopotamian origin. Though most early religions followed the sun as their main god, the Sabaeans considered themselves to be the children of the moon, which they called Al-Maka. Al-Maka is suggested to have been inspired by the Mesopotamian god Nana, whose main temple is in Ur and official color is green. Al-Maka was so important to the Sabaeans that they later associated the deity as the one sole god, which they referred to as Ramanan a term that would eventually find itself in use in reference to the Judeo-Christian God, as Christianity and Judaism were extremely prevalent in South Arabia. Being at the crossroads of East African and Indian sea trade, the Sabaeans were as influential as they were wealthy. Yemen itself was famous for exporting frankincense, an incense found almost nowhere else on earth and considered a must-have for religious gatherings of all kind. With its frankincense and geography, Saba was a hot market, sought out by the rest of the ancient world, making the Sabaeans very rich. But being the hottest guy on the block gets you envious eyes. The Himyarites, a small but mighty faction of the Kataban people, would come to conquer much of Saba along with the rest of South Arabia. The Himyars established a tribe confederation, with the Saba territory remaining to be the most influential state and the Sabaean city of Sana as their imperial capital. Although being the new ruling class, the language and religion of the Himyars remained Sabaean, and as a consequence, the tribes of Saba remained the cultural elite of South Arabia. The Himyars began to call these old Sabaean tribes the Kalan, birthing the two founding Katani tribes, as well as a rivalry that will forever haunt Yemen's history. The Himyar would eventually dominate the Kalan, after taking over the last Sabaean stronghold in Maghrib in the 3rd century CE. Around this time, the great Maghrib Dab collapsed, creating a massive flood. This resulted in a mass exodus of Kalan people across the deserts of Arabia. The descendants of these migrants would go on to form tribes of their own, branching out the Katani family tree. While there are many Kalan branches, I'ma just give you the top five. The first and largest of the Kalan branches is the Azid. The Azid have many famous descendants, but the three most noteworthy are Imran, whose descendants would inhabit Eastern Arabia and the Persian Gulf, becoming a confederacy known as Azid Uman or Oman, Jaffna, whose clan would settle in the deserts of Syria and establish the Ghassanid Kingdom, Rome's first line of defense against the Sassanid Persian Empire and other Arab tribes, and Thalba bin Amr, whose descendants moved to a city called Yathrib, 
became known as the Warrior League Ansar and would play an important role in the city's history. Next we got the Lakhimid tribe, who would occupy much of northeastern Arabia and Mesopotamia. These guys were rivals to the Ghassanids, as they were the Sassanid Empire's buffer state against the Romans. Imru al kais the second king of the Lakhmids, would pioneer the dream of a united Arab nation, proclaiming himself the king of all Arabs. He would be the first of many to do such a thing. The Tay tribe settled in the deserts of Syria, becoming friends of the Sassanid army and raiders of the Romans. Tay was such a popular name to say back in the day, it actually became the Sassanid and Saranic word for Arab. Next we got the Kinda tribe, who allied themselves with the Himyar, eventually becoming the governors of Hadrumat, what is now East Yemen. And finally, we got the Banu Hamdam. The Banu Hamdam are a tribe confederacy, consisting of the brother clans of Hashid and Bakil, the largest and most influential tribes in Yemen, even to this day. While some Hamdams left after the fall of Saba, the Hashid and Bakil remained as Himyarite allies and continued to be among the elite of South Arabia. The Himyarite kingdom would be one of the wealthiest states of the classical era, something that everyone surrounding them noticed. In the 3rd century CE, the Himyarites converted to Judaism in a world dominated by Christian Romans and Zoroastrian Persians. This Jewish kingdom of Himyar found itself surrounded by enemies as it waged war against all the Christians and pagans in Arabia, which was really the majority of the population, so this didn't end well for them. In 525 CE, the Aksumite Empire would invade and conquer Yemen in response to Christian persecution and geopolitical interest. The Ethiopians would soon lose this territory to the Sassanids in 570 CE, which is known in Islamic tradition as the Year of the Elephants. Being able to hold on to Yemen, the Iranians had complete control over the East African and Indian spice trade, gaining an upper hand over a now sick Roman Empire. Although no longer the ruling dynasty, the Banu Hamdan maintained their elite status in Yemen, in fact, the descendants of the Sabaeans would continue to dictate the rest of Yemen's history, being the usual tribal authorities in both Arabia Felice and even the greater Arab world. Saba is the birthplace of the Qatani Arabs, making the Himyar and Kalan the original Arab tribes. It is here, in Yemen, that Arabian and even Amharic civilization would be born. And that's just from the Sabaeans alone. I haven't even mentioned the Haudrami people. The point is, is that the people of Yemen would continue to have their influence be felt around Arabia. And Arabia was about to be felt around the world. Next episode, we tell the tale of the man who led Arab civilization into becoming one of history's greatest legacies. One that would forever change the Middle East and the world itself. Like, share and subscribe for more Sultan Skinny content. If you have something you want to say to the Sultan, leave a comment or follow me on Twitter, Masalema, and see you next time.